Welcome to Fraud Exposed. My name is Lori Maddock from Credit Education Consultants, and today I'll be speaking with my guest, Wynn. So if you want to avoid fraud or know what to do if you've been a victim, stay with us. Don't get ripped off. So today we're going to be discussing senior citizens and younger kids and how how um, my guest, Wynn, can help them avoid this type of cyber fraud. So Wynn, why don't you do an introduction for yourself and then I'm going to hit you up with some questions. Okay, thank you for having me. My name is Wynn Wynn. I'm a founder of Cyber Armor and Scam Tips. Okay, now jumping right into, into fraud. Why are these two groups, senior citizens and sometimes, you know, younger kids who don't have phones, for example, why are they especially vulnerable to scams on their phones and computers? Well, um, for, for one, um, well, let's separate the two groups. Um, so for the elder, um, they are easier target, right? Um, as, as, as the elder, they're not familiar with computer. They're not familiar with the the latest um, scams um, on the internet right now, and they love to talk. Right, they a lot of the elder they very socialize, and um, and that's a great way for scammer to gather a lot of information um, from from the elder. And yeah, and for the kid, I, um, they are. Uh, um, doesn't know enough of what's going on and they have a tendency to also trust them easily. So it's a great way to that the scammer target, you know, both of this group. Yeah, I mean, it didn't used to be like that years ago, but as technology has advanced, it seems to me more like there's more of the bad people than the good people. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Should kids or senior citizens use parent-controlled apps to help avoid scams? Yes, um, for for kids specifically um, on Apple device, and I believe on um, Android device as well, where you can create a family profile, and you have you're able to add your kid into the profile that you're able to manage them. So you're able to specify the have a lot of control for, for the account on, 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 on the, for the kids. So like the, when they're able to access the computer, um, the, the time, the schedule, and the type of um, website or, me. or app that they're able to ac access. All right, hold on for a sec. <laughs> oh. oh, bad today, I'm sorry, yeah. okay. I'll count down from five, five, four. Now with younger younger kids on these parent controlled apps, can hackers get through those apps? I'm gonna guess that you're gonna probably say yes. Um, they potentially can. I mean, they um for for them to take over the account, they would have to go through the the standard process, like um getting the um the username and password of the parents and taken over from there. But um, there are not a lot of uh, known exploit that able to bypass the whole system. I gotcha. How, how easy is it to hack into somebody's phone? Um, the, like, um, fairly easy, I, I should say. Um, okay. It depend on the type, right? Um, like when you we talk about phone, we're talking about accounts. So um, hacker can using like phishing attack to 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 send impersonating like for example Apple uh, password recovery right. So um, they they send that to to the victims, and the you know the victim likely would enter in the um, the username and password. Once they obtain that, they're able to log in and take in over the account from there. I got you. So I mean, phishing is one of the method um, infecting with a malware, a, a virus, a, a, a password stealer type that basically once you run the application, it steal everything, all your password and send it back to the hackers. Well, you just made me realize there's really only Apple's and Android's for the most part 
So when scammers are going after you for one of those, it's 50%, right? They have a 50% chance if you fall for it. So those are really bad odds. Yeah. Um, what should parents be telling their kids and their own parents about protecting their, their devices? And I'm going to ask you that because what happens if I don't lock my phone and I leave it unlocked? You know, how, how do you protect yourself? Mm. So um, let's go with the first one first is if you set your um, phone unlocked, someone can, you know, if you your, the, the phone is not with you 100%, they can just unlock it and do their, you know, um, hacking from there. You, you know, for example, um, sending email, changing passwords, stuff like that. So it's very important to right. lock your phone mm -hmm. using, you know, biometric, like your fingerprint um, to, to lock it um, a lot more. So, you know, it's more critical with that. But it's rare for hackers to do physical type of attacks. They would usually go remote attacks. Um, hey. So um, it's very important to tell the kids to um, um, not open things, teach them um, as early as possible of not, you know, open up the email that they don't expect. Mm -hmm. What I do personally is I create, set up an email for my kid but I'm also manage it. So I see everything going through. Um, so that way I can protect them and, and teach them, show them the difference between a legit email and, and um, not. Um, for the elder, it's a little bit tougher um, because, um, you know, like for my personal experience, um, my parents, um, my, my dad, for example, is very, uh, hard-headed <laughs> so um doesn't matter how much you tell them um they you know is is very hard so um you try to um enable like 2fa uh, multi-factor authentication try to protect the password as much as possible um and that's the only way um like he loved to talk to people because he's a retired so mm -hmm. every time that's someone it. call him he just talk and talk it's like, okay. don't give them any information. You don't know who that is, but um, they don't really, you know, listen. So try to um, protect yeah. the, like the, um, the email, you know, as much as you can. Um, and just sometimes just keep an eye on it. So, yeah, I'm laughing because I have the same situation with my mother because once they're retired, that's right. They if they're not out in their home and somebody calls or they call, that that's what they want to do. They want to spend hours talking on the phone. But they're, you know, some somehow like with my with my mom, it's it takes her longer to grasp the concepts of how to do certain things on the phone. But I know all of her senior friends, they love to text each other's pictures and pictures oh. use a lot of use a lot of data. And I'm always wondering why is my phone? Cause she's on my account. Why is my phone bill so high? Because they're just, I go, can't you email pictures? Oh no, no. Everybody texts pictures. That's what we do. <laughs> okay. But you know, they're not, they're not sure all the time that what they're doing is right. Um, and I think, you know, also, I mean, when you get to a certain age, you know, everybody, I'm going to tell you, uh, everybody over like the age of 55 has a little bit of dementia. And as you get older, you, you start forgetting certain things. And mm -hmm. so by the time you get to your, you know, late seventies, early eighties, maybe the memory, depending on the person just is not quite so good. And they don't remember how to do things or what to look out for when it comes to the emails and those texts and they'll go, oh, yeah, USPS has a package for me, and you know, and they're thinking it's real, and it's and it's not. So, uh, like I said before the show, I I basically tell my family members, if you do not know the name of the person on your phone, do not answer the phone. I don't care if it's a company name because they can they can spoof it, they can fake it. So if if it's anyone other than someone you personally know, don't answer it. Listen to the message. And then if it's from a company, you can find, you know, you have the real company number. Is it the same? If it's not the same number, eh, there's going to be a problem and you can call and, and figure it out that way. Now, are sexual predators a problem and how do they trick people into thinking that they're real? Oof. 
Um, yeah. Yes, it's a major problem. Um, I, I mean, we we see news daily about people losing a lot of money from from romance type of scams, right? So, um, so yeah, it's it's a major problem, and um, we have to be constantly um, worry about it. Like for for me. Um, given access to my kid is 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 a struggle, right? So um, you have to try to limit the access as much as possible because it's a uh, um, people can pretend to be anyone on the internet, um, you know. So a lot of like for example, um, one of the platforms that um, a lot of kid um, go to to play video game is Minecraft, right? And um, or Roblox, and there's all type of people, like even when I hear them, they have a song that's explicit, right? Um, so you constantly have to worry about and ha constantly have to tell them, only play with people you know and, and cannot um, meet people randomly online because they can be anyone. Um, that's true. And, you know, in the case of my friends who have younger kids, most of them, don't have phones and they may be able to access the computer but kids are going to mm -hmm. try and access to get information that normally they wouldn't want their parents you know their parents to know um and i think i might have shared this on a, on a previous um show but this is many years ago 30 25 30 years ago my friend's daughter was about 12 at the time and lived next door to someone who was uh, a young girl who was on myspace that was the big thing back mm -hmm. then and the guy sent pictures. Of course, we're in New Jersey then. And I guess this guy is in New York City. And he pretends to be someone else, arranges to meet her, uh, meets her at Port Authority. She still gets in his car, even though he's like three times older than her, and goes home with him and he rapes her. And so, yes, and that's a terrible story. So, but one I want to share because the same thing happens on Facebook, like you're talking, um, you know, the, the, the romance scams or um, one of the reasons I tell people about Tin Eye or Google Lens is if you see a photograph, you can run it through one of those two um, to see is that picture showing up anywhere else. Um, I used to know a fella, he was on my Facebook. He was, I don't know, a, an admiral or brigadier or something like that. He had a very, very high title. And so I think it's bad when you have people who have kindly been service members for our nation and they like to put their picture up with their uniform and their medals and their hat. And in a normal world, that would be fine, but it's not a normal world. And so what happened was I think over 300 people took his picture and made profiles using his photo. Yeah. So the scary part nowadays, whereas it used to be a much better world in terms of not so many hackers, now it's turned around. And I almost have to assume that that everybody is a hacker. It's it, it's basically you're guilty until I see that you're innocent because I really don't know. Now you have mm -hmm. kids. So are your kids on social media at all or, or some type of controlled app or they just know better because dad will kill them? <laughs> um yes um they they have a they use in like facebook messenger so it's only for kid and they have a very strict um control in place for it so um so we let them to texting their um sending message to their cousin um social media no um not not yet and because it's uh like tiktok is very popular so um they they're not into it. Uh, they they currently training into securities to be aware of all these things. So, but yeah, it's uh not yet too early. So, yeah, and and you mentioned TikTok, which is one that um I might have had an account, but I'm not on TikTok. Mm -hmm. After I read, uh, you know, their their government can access Americans' information, but in particular, they access information of young children. And why would another country want information of young children from the United States? I, I can't answer that question, but I just know there's something wrong there. So, you know, a lot of times people go, oh, well, it was on TikTok. And I go, I don't do TikTok. I don't want to put any more risk out there because I've already been hit up a number of times with fraud 
I already know from as we talked on the previous show, I already know I'm on the dark web. Mm -hmm. So I want you before we close out. I want you to mention the scams tips uh, blog that you're doing and also the service you're doing on the dark web, because I think that's really a good service for next to nothing. Yeah, thank you. So um, recently, um, early this year, we start um, with a new blog called scams.tips, um, where we um, write up the latest scams um, to share to um, people and some of them the some of the um, current trend of scams and how to protect themselves. Our main goal is to help consumer to um, have the ability to identify scams out there and to improve the security posture to um, protect themselves better. So um, go to https www.scams.tips and subscribe and it's a uh, freely available for everyone. And uh, we try to provide as early info, um, alerting as possible about the latest games. Excellent. Well, I wanna thank you for joining me today. It was a very informative show and we'll be back next week on Fraud Expose. Thank you very much.